It is time to start our most involved assignment of the semester. It isn't, I don't think, the most difficult project we're going to do. We're going to keep building our skills. But it is the one that we give the most class time over to, even more than our final project. This is animation. So it's the last element of a required assignment that makes use of mostly compositing. So we've gone through all this stuff. We've, we've looked at basic vector shapes with exercise two. We've looked at compositing with exercise one and assignment one and assignment two. We put them together in our proving ground and did a lot of internal compositing. Now it's time for unit seven. All animation is, is the illusion of movement by putting still images in sequence and playing them at a certain time. Right, so that the, the artist controls how long the viewer sees each image. And the very basic way of understanding it is that when you want to animate something, you have to make multiple images and then play them in sequence so that you don't see it as different images anymore. You see it as one image that is changing. This is a, a perfect example of what I'm going to demonstrate this semester. It's a transformation from a basic emoji face into something more complex, right? You are only required to do two things for this project. That is to show a transformation in your animation. So we are not changing scenes. We are not changing time or place. We are having something that changes from beginning, middle to end changes state not just moves but changes right so how did this change to get to this well the nose grew that's a change from beginning middle to end it added the hat <laughs> that's a change from beginning middle to end and it had all these hearts appear that's a change from beginning middle to end so this is considered a transformation it also stuck out its tongue sticking out its tongue alone would just be movement right because it's not like the tongue has changed beginning middle to end but the tongue sticking out reveals that there's something on the tongue. That's just a nice little kind of movement reveal. So there's a difference between a transformation in animation and what's called a movement test. We're trying to go beyond movement test and show story in how something changes. The other requirement is you have to use something that you've already created in the class. That doesn't mean it's that's the only thing you can use, but something you've re already created in the class, whether it's your, your line art jumble, whether it's your emoji exercise, whether it's your landscape, or whether it's your creature, or any combination of those, has to be present in your animation. So let's talk about how you could show a transformation just using assignment one, your landscape. Just showing the clouds moving and the, the grass rustling in the wind, that's a movement test. So how can you transform that landscape? Well, what if the weather changes, right? A storm comes in, lightning strikes, a tree gets set on fire. That's a transformation. It, it changes from beginning, middle to end. And then of course you can have the fire go out. You can have the, the sun come back out. We're gonna learn how to loop these animations, set them to reset so they're, they're nice GIF animations. But you wanna think of that change rather than just having like water flowing through your landscape. What about for your creature? Well, your creature can do all kinds of things. The reason I like uh, Pokemon as kind of original influence for your fantasy creatures is Pokemon have evolutions, right? So change is already built into that design. So you could have your creature change colors. You could have your creature sprout wings. You could have your creature uh, start eating its own tail and get halfway and then vomit vomit itself up and now it's a different texture now it's covered in slime you know whatever you want to do you can also animate your creature in your landscape which is what i what i do every other semester as a demo so you'll see past videos of that but you still need to show a transformation it's not enough even though it's very difficult it's not enough to just make your creature kind of walking through your landscape i'll often have the creature like eat something and then change a different color or you want changes, transformations. The reason we're not changing scene is because we have to do this within nine steps. So 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one more step because we're going to design these with a storyboard. And the storyboard is gonna be a three, three on three grid. That doesn't mean that our final animation will only be nine images. It means it has to be a minimum of nine images. But when we design it, we need to be able to tell the story in nine simple images. And that keeps us from being too ambitious so that we can do a good job at the animation. So let's look at some past examples. They'll hopefully make a lot more sense. So this is what a, a storyboard looks like. This is a rough storyboard. And this one animated the creature in the environment. And there's no transformation except at the beginning and at the end. This, no, the creature has kind of this rock shell. And so you'll see he's going to roll in here as a rock and then kind of unrolls like an armadillo. And then he just walks across. Now, this is a good example. I use this because it's a very basic idea that's just a pain in the butt to execute. This is what's called a panning shot. And so for animation, it's all about your assets. You need to have enough assets for every frame you're gonna show. So for a panning shot, that means you have to have this really big background that you can pan across for each frame and then kind of keep track of it, keep track of the timing. So like the that I have, mm -hmm. the whole one, the yeah, one that, works. that works as a panning background. That's why we did it at, at such a large size, such a high resolution. I do want all of your finished animations to fit within a square. There's practical reasons for that. There's, there's aesthetic reasons for that. So we are going to design them within squares. Though if we were animating for a feature film, we would use the widescreen ratio of the theater. Right? So here's an example with the emoji. Here are, here's the rough storyboard. And then what I like about this example is it shows how different animation is than the frames. Because we're going to finish with making a print storyboard. This is called a refined storyboard for your portfolio, which just takes selected screen grabs from it and shows it like a comic book. They both tell the same story, the same transformation. But with animation, you get kind of direction and movement, implied movement, and it can be a lot more engaging. Here's one I did for the semester where we had the freeze. <laughs> so, so I just froze my creature. But then, but then what's nice is you can always just reverse the frames and, and, and thaw, thaw them out, right? Yeah, it just goes for... Yeah. If I had more time, that would be good. <laughs> Yeah, you probably will not feel like you have enough time for this project. So you try to, we use the sketch, we try to focus in on what you want and then focus our efforts there. So transformation, right? I'm going to use uh, the emoji for my demo. I started, started doing this when we were remote and everyone had to do it on PhotoP. And you can do this project without Photoshop, but Photoshop makes it a lot easier. And there are directions here for how to do it with programs like giftmaker.me. But basically, we're just making a lot of digital images that then we're piling all together and then telling a program to play them at a certain framework. And that's what giftmaker.me does. Photoshop has the tools within it to already do that with layers, so that's what we're going to use. And with it, you can take any sequence of images and then animate them, right? And then once you've done a rough animation like this, you can decide, do I want in-betweens? Do I need to extend certain moments? Do I need something to be smoother? But the minimum you'll have are nine frames. These are called keyframes that tell the story. Our goal is to use something we've already created, maybe add new things to it, to have full control over the pixels of that thing so that we can actually transform them across at least nine images to show a transformation. We want it to be engaging. 
We want it to be understood by an audience without us having to, to explain it or write about it. And we want it to be versatile. Remember, digital art is the most versatile art discipline. So we want to be mindful of resolution. We want to be mindful of digital formats. We're going to be using the GIF, G-I-F, GIF format because that easily posts with an animated script anywhere that has an online interface. And we're also going to make it as a print format. We're gonna do a, 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 a refined storyboard that you can put into your print portfolio. So here's just a really quick demo that I did for the first time I introduced this project when we were still remote, just using PhotoP and using gifmaker.me Simple idea was to take this emoji and turn it into this emoji, right? That's a transformation. It happens on a blank background, but a blank background is still a choice. Whenever you're showing narrative, there are three elements. There's character, there's setting, and there's the illusion of time passing. Comic books do it with sequential panels. Animation does it with sequential images that are timed, timed sequential images. So what is the setting here? Well, the setting here is just empty space, right? And that's allowed. But the setting could be your landscape. The setting could be some other environment. You can have a change of setting, not of character. What is character? Character is the thing you tell a story through. So the example I often use is a paper clip on a desk. A paper clip can be a character if that's the thing that the audience experiences the story through. So if you show a paper clip across nine images, and the paperclip always stays the exact same on the desk, but the lighting around the paperclip changes, like dust motes start to well up. If a mouse comes in and casts a shadow on the paperclip, the mouse isn't the character, it's the paperclip that's the character because it's what we experience the story through. So all narratives have a character, have a setting, and have some way of showing that time is passing. Okay. For this project, you can see lots of past examples, especially if you want to do something other than what I'm demoing this semester. I encourage you to look at our past playlists where they deal with the GIF animation project. So last semester, I'll alternate. I took a creature. Let's get to the end here. And I animated that creature in its environment. So taking assignment one and two, I started with a rough storyboard. And this became a pretty crazy animation. The idea was that the creature what was the idea? It kind of got petrified, like turned to stone and then cracked open and a smaller version of the creature kind of exploded out of it like an egg. And so by the end, across this number of panels, I got the animation. But you'll notice this took 16 demos, each 15 minutes. So it takes some time to, to put this all together. But it's all serving whatever the concept is that you have in your initial sketch, which sometimes has to change a little bit. And then we put the, the final, I'm just trying to get to the place where I actually play it through. Once we finish with the animation, then we make the refined storyboard. And this was all done in Photoshop last semester. And I use Puppet Warp. And I'll just show you quickly with my Instagram. I liked this one enough that I posted it. So GIF animations are perfect for web presentation, right? There's some glitch effects added and you play with the timing, but basically this is just a bunch of digital images played in a certain frame rate. And then you'll notice it repeats. So you kind of set it to reset at a certain point.
this is what the refined storyboard looked like. So once you're finished with the animation, then you choose 